Thanks, as I said, uh, for having us and joining us today. My name is Marco, and I like to talk about product, as the other three chefs I have here with me as well. Hopefully, you do so as too. The story we would like to share with you is about our journey with Mercedes-Benz, focused on exploring new European markets for our retail sales platform. As I said uh, in the beginning, using service design thinking, we navigated the complexities of this expansion with truly innovative strategies and insights. And as I said, we should directly dive in. So for a moment, please uh, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Imagine being told you have to cook a three-star meal, but you have no idea what, ex expect what is expected, what ingredients you might need, where to get them, and last but not least, who you're cooking for and with. The only thing you know for sure, you have to get the meal out on your guest table on time. By the way, for those of you uh, whose eyes are still closed, you can open them now. I think you are with us. And that exactly <clears throat> was and still is our challenge. At the time, at that time, we had four weeks or 20 working days to be exact. The kitchen timer that I have here is not just for boiling eggs. It became our symbol of urgency for adapting the Mercedes-Benz retail platform which currently only exists in Germany for a new European market. You now might be wondering, why is this guy talking about cooking? Well, like cooking with friends, product development is a collaborative endeavor in its ideal state. You need the right ingredients, the right team, especially, as I said, when you have a tight deadline to whip up something that tastes good and people want to actually eat. So it's not a cooking show. You didn't walk into the wrong room. Don't worry, you're in the right place. Cooking and product development, so we believe, really, have more in common than you might think. And we often said our endeavor felt like, as I said, cooking with friends. Don't get me wrong. The management, our discerning guests, expected nothing less than three-star Michelin meal served on time. Luckily, in our kitchen, there were no overbearing chefs telling you how to chop your onions or cucumbers or whether your bechamel sauce met those high standards. It was like, again, I can't repeat this too often, it was like cooking with friends. Here we go. Pitch in where you can and make sure we are serving something extraordinary when this timer goes off. But before we start, let me introduce my fellow chefs. First, we have Constance Siming. She's program manager at Mercedes-Benz, responsible for OTR. Then we have uh, Rosario Martinez, manager for sales processes at Mercedes-Benz. My fellow colleague, Anja Gerhard, she's lead uh, experience designer at ThoughtWorks. And myself, Marco, experience design lead and product design strategist at ThoughtWorks. So, Let's take a look how we pulled off this amazing feat of user-centered design initially in just four weeks and beyond. Let me hand it over to Constanze to tell you more about it. Thank you, Marco. Before getting to our next chapter and understanding the landscape, let's first focus ourselves on the vision that drives our mission. OTR is the most loved, intuitive and scalable sales platform that enables our salesperson to create a seamless buying experience for all customers across Europe. You might be wondering what's the meaning of OTR and what is a sales platform? OTR or One Touch Retail is a product for our salespersons. So the people selling you cars to our customers or to you um, in our dealerships, um, which with, with which they can fulfill all tasks during their sales journey. From searching and creating a customer to configure a vehicle or provide an offer, from working out financing, changing colors or configurations, till handing it over to the customer and invoicing it, OTR is an essential part of our customer journey. If you ever made the experience of buying a new car yourself, you will know how exciting and sometimes long and surprisingly complex this process can be not only from customer side. 
It might not look that complex on this slide, but trust me, it is. So already today, ODR supports our salespersons in Germany from the moment where a customer enters one of our dealerships up until the moment where the customer has the key for his new car in his head. This is our current and yes, successful OTR story in OTR. But our journey continues for Europe. Let's hand over to Rosario to talk about the challenges from his process owner perspective. Yeah, thank you very much, Constanze. And if you want to develop and roll out such a big platform across Europe, this doesn't come without any challenges, especially as Mercedes-Benz embarks on its transformation to the so-called direct sales model. And let me explain this as simply as possible. So we at Mercedes-Benz are in the middle of a comprehensive transformation that will, will redefine sales in Germany, but also throughout Europe. And this shift to a direct sales model aims to centralize pricing and make it even more transparent for the customer and therefore also standardize the customer experience. And the implications of this change are huge, impacting sales strategies, operational processes, and even corporate culture. So imagine the monumental task of guiding a salesperson through these steps in multiple markets, each with its own customs and unique characteristics. So this isn't just a growth strategy, it's especially a cultural shift. It's a redefinition of the sales experience. Adapting these platforms to accommodate these changes requires not only the technical expertise, but also a deep understanding of these new dynamics. And this is especially true for our core users, the salespersons in the dealerships. But let's step back for a second and talk about our mission first. That's why I would like to hand over to Anya. Thank you, Rosario. Yes, so now that you know the scale of what we wanted to achieve, I want, to I want you to imagine that you've only got four weeks to do that. So four weeks to evaluate how to extend a sophisticated retail platform to another European market after Germany. It sounds exciting, doesn't it? And also a little nerve wracking given the time frame. But that was our mission figure out how OTR would fit into another European market with a different culture, different needs, and yes, also different challenges. So what did this look like in reality? As a delicious starter, we were tasked with estimating the time it would take to develop already written demands for the next European market. Our goal, we had to assess whether we could realistically introduce OTR to this first market within six months. Constanze, what did this mean for OTR? Yeah, we did not just want to reinvent the wheel, of course. We had a successful run with OTR in Germany, so we had a strong foundation. But you know as well as we do that what works in one country doesn't necessarily is a home run in another one. We had to understand those differences that could make or break our product in a new environment. So how did you do that in just four weeks? Well, you focus, you laser focus. You dig deep into what you already have and ask, how can this be adapted? What needs to be changed? What are the potential pitfalls and how can we avoid them? And you manage the scope. In our case, we focused on legal and fiscal requirements of the new market. Our goal was holistic. We didn't want to build a new platform. We wanted a complete 360 degree view on what adapting our existing platform would need. What elements could be replicated, what needed to be changed, and most importantly, what were the demands of the new market, what we had not considered before. On top of that, we had and still have another job to do. Every step we take, every mistake we make, and every lesson we learn is aimed to creating a template that could be used to approach further markets based on our journey. It's not just about the first market. It's about setting a course for future teams to work as seamlessly as possible in our market um, expansion. So let's recap our goals. 
four weeks time to analyze demands, determine what needs to be changed about our existing product, and if it's possible to do that in six months. Create a discovery template that will work for future markets. All of this in the middle of a major organizational shift. Of course, you cannot cook such a meal by yourself. So in the next part, let's talk about our discovery strategy and the cooks that were involved. Let me hand over to Marco. Thanks a lot, Constanze. So having navigated the complexities of our mission and the dynamic landscape in which we operate, we now turn to the heart of our journey, the market discovery strategies. This chapter is about where our plans meet reality, where our strategies are tested against the diverse structure of European markets. Entering this phase was like, let me say it, entering uncharted territory. We knew our destination, first European market of OTR outside of Germany. But the journey, I can tell you, it was full of nuance, complexity and immense learning opportunities. So let's dive into how we map this terrain, the challenges we faced and the discoveries that guided us along the way. When I think about that, I'm reminded of a pivotal moment that truly defined our journey. Imagine, no worries, you don't have to close your, your eyes this time. Uh, a room filled with diverse minds, client stakeholders, program leads, system architects, designers, technical experts, and strategists. Our idea to focus our diverse both skills and perspectives on a common goal, adapting OTR for the European market. To tell you more about that, I would like to hand over to Rosario. Rosario? Thank you, Marco. Exactly. So one of our first activities was an in-person hopes and fears session. So that means everyone expressed their honest hopes and fears. And it was like uh, gathering friends in a kitchen, each bringing their unique ingredients, unsure of the final meal, yet excited about the possibilities. And this session wasn't just an icebreaker. It was the secret sauce that led to a foundation for our collaboration. And in this shared kitchen, we faced our first challenge to adapt the diverse landscape of a new market. And each country in Europe has its own specialities. So that means unique legal and fiscal requirements and a pending transformation of the operating model, different types of market players and also salespersons with their own unique ways of doing business. So we had to wave these disparate threads into a cohesive strategy. And we quickly experienced how combining different roles to solve tasks was very valuable to reach our ambition goal. And due to the tight timeline, none of us had the luxury to focus on the usual area of responsibility only. So we needed to join forces and we actually wanted to. Before we met, the business processes analysis of the entire sales journey along the shift to the direct sales model were separated from OTR's product management. So we started truly to collaborate and we analyzed existing findings, applied well-known and new methodologies to discover, discuss, but also to visualize and document these findings. And we all learn from each other. We learn to trust each other and to drive matters to the desired outcome. So while becoming a team and all the necessary change for this was challenging enough, another challenge came up. So what is our perspective of understanding the dependencies within our goal? We had tons of documentation in Confluence, Jira, Signavio, and even Mural, and even more ideas. And unfortunately, all of them were written to fulfill different needs and from different perspectives. So the business process was designed in Signavio, for example, the overall IT architecture in some internal tools and outcomes of our user researchers in Mural. That means everyone had picture in mind, but was it the same one? And let me hand over to Anja to tell you more about it. Anja. Thanks, Rosario. So as we begin our journey through applying service design thinking to new markets, we'd now like to start with a short survey. Um, and I think you should 
see a pop-up on your screen very soon where we would ask you to answer one simple question. Um, what is your experience with service design thinking? You have, yeah, you have four options. Click one of them and then hopefully we can continue soon. Maybe let's wait for one second. Ah, okay, and the results are already there. So thank you for your participation. Um, it's always enlightening to understand the variety of experiences and also backgrounds in our audience. So whether you're new to service design thinking or a seasoned practitioner, and I think we have a good mix, um, we, all, we, we hope and we are confident that you'll find value in our discussion today. So let me quickly remove that here or take it here. Okay. Thank you. So now that we have a better idea of our collective experience with service design thinking, let's explore what it is and how we've applied it to exploring new markets. So what is service design thinking? First things first, it's not just a buzzword. It's a human-centered approach to creating and improving services. It's about understanding and responding to the needs, wants, and also experiences of customers and service providers. It's based on the principles of design thinking, but this methodology focuses more on services rather than physical products. So it's about looking at the entire journey, understanding every touch point along this journey and making sure that it all comes together seamlessly. The question is, in our case, why did we go for service design thinking? When we started comparing the German and future European markets, the complexity of everything we've learned and found out was simply staggering. So we needed a way to track market-specific requirements while also understanding common needs. With more markets to come, our challenge, it was not just the immediate product, but the entire sales journey along the shift to the agency model processes. So we direly needed a tool, a future-proof one, a future-proof approach that would allow us to iteratively, iteratively yeah, uncover and track new market insights. While we still focus on customer experience and also manage this huge amount of complexity. And that's where service design thinking came in, shining a light on a landscape full of unknowns. So, Imagine a map that shows the entire sales journey from a customer's first interaction to the proud moment where they own their new Mercedes-Benz. That is what we created with the OTR Service Design Blueprint map. It wasn't just a document, it was a living, evolving guide that helped us navigate the unique landscape of each market. So this blueprint map became the heart of our strategy. It wasn't just about the what's on the map and what's happening. It's also about the how does it happen and why does it happen? It took into account or takes into account different user groups. You can see them here um, from top to bottom. We have the, the customer, for example, we have a sales rep, we have um, other users who work in the background. Um, it also contains actions that or steps that are directly visible or guided by a customer and also actions that would happen in the background unseen to the customers, but still essential for the whole journey to work. It would also entail various IT systems, and most importantly in our case, market-specific differences. So let me talk a bit about the impact service design thinking had on various teams and processes, and also this map. We experienced that it reshaped our teamwork and the processes we followed. So, this wasn't an easy journey to get there. There were obstacles, there were debates, there was a huge learning curve along the way, but it helped us break down silos and to foster collaboration and keep our focus while we broke those silos on the users themselves. We weren't just building a product, we were building an experience using this map and the approach. So an essential part of the approach were feedback loops and also continuous improvement. The service design blueprint itself evolved as we progressed. It was adapted to new insights and also to challenges. Uncertainty, in our case, wasn't a setback. It was part of the journey, a spark for innovation and improvement, seeing where we could make improvements along the journey. So looking ahead, 
as we continue to expand OTR into new markets, this service design thinking approach will remain our guiding star. It's not just about managing complexity. It's about embracing it, understanding it, and also turning it into our strength. Up next, Constanze will tell you more about how we want to make sure that this blueprint and what it entails for our discovery strategy remains an effective and ever-evolving tool to realize our strategy. So Constanze, back to you. Thank you, Anja. As we continue to move towards measuring our success and continuous improvement, let's acknowledge how the ingredients of feedback and collaboration have flavored our journey. The service design blueprint has been like a well-loved recipe book, shared and refined across our teams. Think of the service design blueprint as a base source that can be adapted to different cooking styles. It reaches beyond the cooks in our kitchen, from product owners to delivery teams to program management. Each adds their own seasoning, enhancing the overall flavor and making it suitable for many different tastes. Reflecting the value of this space source, a business analyst on the OTR delivery team shared the following. Honestly, I built up most of my work on the service design blueprint. It's a tab I never close. This is similar to keeping our recipe book open at all time, ready to be checked and refined. In practice, it guides our day-to-day -day work and strategic decisions. The impact of the service design blueprint extends beyond our circle. Stakeholders outside our direct teams have adopted it for their workshops and planning. However, this adoption has come with its own set of challenges, particularly around ownership and maintenance of such a central artifact. As valuable as the service design blueprint is, it's a living document that is continually refined with feedback from various stakeholders. Its dynamic nature ensures that it remains relevant and effective, adopting to new insights and evolving market demands. We intend to keep this recipe book open, adding new chapters, refining old ones, and ensuring that it remains relevant. Our commitment to continuous improvement doesn't end here. The iterated development of the service design blueprint is ongoing, ensuring that it reminds a vital tool not only for our current strategies, but also as a guide for future expansions and challenges. Now, I am handing over to Rosario for our conclusion. Thanks, Constanze and dear listeners. Yes, we are about to close this talk, but uh, let's reflect on our journey and look ahead to the paths yet to be charted. This chapter, our conclusion, is not just an end. Uh, but it's a gateway to continuous evolution and adaption. So we are not just setting the standard for tomorrow's retail experience, but we are waving these critical global concerns into the DNA of our business. Working with partners like ThoughtWorks, we have adopted a one team, one voice mindset to ensure our strategies and align these with broader goals. And it's been heartening to see a legacy organization like we are, Mercedes-Benz, to embrace agile and customer-centric methodologies. And this adaptability, typically seen in a smaller, more nimble teams, is a statement to our commitment to growth and responsiveness in an ever-changing landscape. And to be very clear here, we're not at the finish. In fact, there isn't one. Our journey is one of continuous improvement, of striving for something better, even in the face of imperfection. So change, especially in an organization as large as Mercedes-Benz is, is a marathon, not a sprint. And above all, it requires patience, clear direction, and open communication and discourse, of course. And as we look to the future, our path is lined with opportunities for growth, for learning and impact, like a kitchen full of creativity. And Mercedes-Benz and ThoughtWorks continue to cook up solutions that are not only effective, but also sustainable and customer focused. And throughout our journey, the service design blueprint has been our solid base source, a funda foundational tool from which we've built and refined our strategies. A key piece of advice especially under the pressure of tight deadlines, is not to shy away from introducing new concepts, 
such as the service design blueprint. So don't wait to integrate these innovative approaches. Start with this solid foundation and allow it to evolve as you gain more insights, face new challenges, and enable continuous adaption and creativity. And now, as we bring our culinary journey to a close, I invite you to share thoughts and questions, and I would like to hand over to Marco.